Hey everyone, it's Robert Hall and today we're gonna go over a sequence of images to discuss freezing motion with flash photography. Now this was from a session over the summer, the same day where we shot with smoke bombs and had Brie up in a big tree. The last thing we were shooting that day were these smoke bomb images of Brie walking on water. I promise a video on that is coming very soon. Now as the sun went down, I asked Brie if she would be down to try a wet hair flip. Now I would have loved to have had another flash involved in this image, but Brie was freezing in the water so I just went with the flash that we already had out, which was a Godox 8600 Pro. I did have an 8200 Pro available, but trying to keep the battery pack above water is sketchy. The Godox 8600 Pro happened to be the best flash available for this shot anyways. Out of all of my all-in-one Godox and Flashpoint strobes, the 8600 Pro has the shortest flash durations. Flash durations are a number represented as a fraction such as T.1 equals 1 over 10,000. In that example, the time it takes a flash to go from its peak brightness to one tenth of its peak brightness is one ten thousandth of a second. All the battery powered Godox X series lights are IGBT strobes, so as you drop the power level, the flash duration shortens. The shorter the flash duration, the less time the flash is illuminating the subject, meaning the less motion it will show. A quick thing I like about the Godox strobes is you can have the T.1 flash durations show on the strobes display, which is handy if you're attempting a shot like this. Also, I've tested of them and they are extremely accurate. Now, if you're shooting a rather stationary subject like an outdoor portrait, flash duration isn't a significant concern as there's simply not much motion to potentially blur. But when we start whipping water across the frame, flash duration makes a huge impact. Next thing to consider was the flash position. I used a close 42 inch easy lock softbox to create soft light. Since I only had one light to work with, I decided to have Bree slightly ahead of the flash to get some short lighting on her while still letting a little of the flash travel behind her with the hope of it illuminating the water as it traveled behind her. My flash power was 1 over 1 28th. I positioned the flash just out of frame to reduce the distance. Reducing the distance allowed me to drop the output as much as possible, which gives me the shortest flash duration possible. The other reason a low output is important is for fast recycle speed. I had my Sony a7R 4 in its high plus drive mode to capture 10 frames per second, and while the 8600 Pro recycles very quickly, it still takes a relatively low power to maintain flash through 12 frames in a second. I also pre focused, that is, establish my autofocus before the sequence takes place. This ensures that I don't lose frames due to the system trying to autofocus while I'm shooting the sequence. Looking at the results, we can see the effect of this super low output and short flash duration. The water in front of Brie is pretty well frozen in place. Notice though, even with all this effort, there is still some minor motion blurring even in the spots hit with the most light. This is a combination of ambient light and the flash that hasn't fully stopped illuminating the scene. We also see different amounts of motion in the water. The water near the surface is still traveling upwards, so we see a little bit of motion blur there. However, as we get higher, gravity has slowed this water down and it's more still. Once we look at the water that is behind Brie, we start seeing the water that has rotational force from the whipping of the hair, so there is an increase in motion blur. The areas with the most motion blur is the water that is traveling the fastest and crashing back towards the surface. These water droplets behind Brie have less flash hitting them as well, a product of the light fall off from the flash being so close. Now, I'm not gonna say any of this was a desired result. We were on limited time with Brie freezing and I was restricted to the gear from the previous set of photos. It was simply a, hey, we're already here in the water, let's try this and then we'll go home. Now, looking back at this sequence, if I wanted to freeze all the water by behind Brie as well, I would have done a few things differently. First, I would have let it get a little bit darker outside. If it got, say, two stops darker outside, I could have increased the ISO another stop and dropped the flash power to its minimum of 1 256 power. This would result in even shorter flash durations and more action stopping potential. Additionally, the ambient light would be underexposed by another stop, meaning it would have less opportunity to expose the moving water. This would clear up a lot of these darker motion blurs. Finally, I would have added a second light as a kicker light from behind, deeper in the water. This would have illuminated all that water behind her to be more even with the water droplets that are in front of her. I would likely choose either the 8200 in its Fresnel head or the V1 zooming in as much as possible. Both of these throw some serious output when left unmodified, so I could have kept them at a very low output level and getting a short flash duration to match the 600 Pro. Ultimately, I didn't really love any one specific image from this set. In the images where her hair is in the air, you don't see the full dynamic curve of the water. And when you do see that full curve, her hair is already completely down. 
So I did what any rational human being would do. I combined the hair and water droplets from the entire sequence into a single image. Now I think I'll upload it to Instagram with a description. Haters will say it's Photoshop. I hope you guys enjoyed this discussion on flash durations and motion blur. Hope you guys pick something up and it's just nice to kind of see the visual results of all of these different properties of a flash. Hit that like button for me if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and leave any questions in the comments below. Until next time, keep on shooting.